Black History Month here at the top. We're excited to introduce you to a brilliant scientist whose treatment for cancer using lasers has the potential to change the game. Please welcome Dr. Hadia Nicole Green. For being here, you flew in from Atlanta, yes. where you are a professor at an HBCU. So that's yeah. right, that's right. Okay. I know beginning cancer research was uh, deeply personal for you. Uh, how did your work start? So first, let me say thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. It, it seems like all of my life prepared me to get to this moment. Mm -hmm. From Losing my biological parents and having my aunt and uncle be more like parents than distant relatives, it brought this whole experience very close to home. And all of the little experiences of having my aunt um, have me in the kitchen with her making cornbread from scratch, oh, making yeah. Um, yeah. baking yeah. cakes from scratch, mm -hmm. taught me how to do protocols that yeah. For me, it was like doing chemistry, yes. right? Because I, I didn't mm -hmm. have a, a chemistry kit or a mm -hmm. science kit growing up. That was it for me, right? Mm -hmm. And then she would sit me down and have me untangle all those little necklaces in her jewelry yeah. box. Mm -hmm. If you guys have ever yeah. seen oh, yeah. the yeah. necklaces in an old lady's jewelry yeah. box, and I would sit for hours. And, it, and, and that gave me my love for solving puzzles. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had a brother who had me doing his fourth grade homework mm -hmm. when I was in kindergarten. <laughs> And he would celebrate every time I figured out a puzzle. And I had his actual, the fourth grade teacher who flunked him. And <laughs> <laughs> he had to repeat the fourth grade. She found out, and she started sending me a subscription of Highlight Magazine. Wow. Right. Wow. And I so, like so I love solving puzzles. Mm -hmm. And even though he repeated fourth grade, I ended up being the first in the family to go to college. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, uh, wait, but you named your foundation after your aunt? I did. So mm -hmm. the Aura Lee Smith Cancer Research Foundation is named as, after my late aunt in honor of all the women who don't have a building named after them, who took care of children that weren't theirs. And, and it, she was, her journey with cancer mm -hmm. was so heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. For her to say that she would rather die than experience the side effects of chemotherapy and radiation, um, it was really heartbreaking. And I was her primary caregiver the last three months of her life. So I saw all of this transition. And then three months after she passed, my uncle who raised me was diagnosed with cancer. I was his primary caregiver. As he lost 150 pounds, all of his hair, all of his eyebrows, all of his eyelashes, his skin was your complexion, beautiful chocolate. Mm -hmm. It looked like it had been barbecued. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm -hmm. gosh. It was heartbreaking. Yeah. And I said, there has to be something better than this. That's right. Mm -hmm. And people shouldn't have to choose between those experiences mm -hmm. and healthy, affordable cancer care. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. So explain to those of us who not, are not maybe as scientifically minded, what your research is and, and how you are trying to give those solutions and fix this puzzle. So I, uh, there are so many different analogies. So part of the inspiration was that I interned at NASA and mm -hmm. I trained under the people who develop like fiber optics mm -hmm. and faster cable and internet, which is what I thought I was going to do in life. Mm -hmm. and, and so I ended up, um, taking the inspiration that if a satellite in outer space can tell whether a dime on the ground is face up or face down, mm -hmm. or yeah. a cell phone can call anywhere on the planet, even in a stadium full of people on the right. other side of the planet, right. and target just one cell phone, surely we should be able to use space technology to yeah. eradicate cancer. That's yeah, right. right. Target cancer cells. Yes. Yeah. Right. In the body. That's right. So, right. here I am at 22 years old, a 4.0 GPA That's as a physics about. major. That's and, and 
had a full scholarship to graduate school and I said, you know, why not use this Albert Einstein education to eradicate cancer? So for those of you guys who are not scientists, I'm taking really tiny, tiny particles that you can't see with the naked eye called nanoparticles. And I designed a new type of nanoparticle. And it's, it's only activated with a certain wavelength of a laser. Mm. And so you can shine this laser on the nanoparticles that we inject directly in the tumor, mm -hmm. and the laser causes the nanoparticles to get hot, so hot, that they kill cancer cells. Yeah. When a person like you, I can see why the Girl Scouts named you one of their national yeah. role models. Because you really, you know, you're an example for others to follow. You are really doing great things. That smart brain, and yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So that was one of the most humbling honors, right? So I see celebrities and entertainers and rappers saying, I don't want to be a role model. And I'm like, oh, I'll be a role model. Right? Yes. We need one right here. Yeah. You are the kind of role model we need That's to encourage right. more young black women to go into STEM. How did you, as a young girl from, as I understand, inner city St. Louis, yeah. right? You grew up in St. Louis. St. Louis. See that my future is in physics and yeah. getting the one of the first PhDs mm -hmm. in physics for black women. So, yeah. you guys have on the screen my uncle who raised me Aww. and there were only two times in life where I saw him cry yeah. it was when my aunt passed and the day that I graduated with my PhD in physics. Yeah. I never imagined that life would bring me here mm -hmm. right it was a accumulation of all the experiences from That's the true. necklaces to my brother mm -hmm. um, celebrating every time I got a problem right, doing mm -hmm. his fourth grade math in kindergarten, yeah. um, getting the, the 4.0 grade point average in physics. But when I became a physics major, it wasn't because I was trying to be a physics major. There was this lady named Aisha Fields who became the 50th African-American woman to get a PhD in physics mm -hmm. that led to me becoming the 76th black woman to get a PhD in wow. physics. And wow. That's a great thing. Yeah. Well, wait, you this for you go too. Okay. I love the fact that you talked about cooking yeah. being about chemistry. Yes. There's a lot of chemists out there. Yes. On these <laughs> out there. Yes. I love that. I love that. I love Dr. that. Dr. Green, keep telling your story That's because right. more need to hear it. Thank you so much for being here with us.